Welcome to FMG Recall Rush. We hope you are prepared to answer 25 PYQs from Pharmacology. You will be provided with 5 seconds to answer each question. A brief explanation will be given after each question for you to quickly recap the concepts. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the first question. Question 1. A patient comes to you with increased cough, increased breathlessness and decreased exercise capacity. Chest X-ray shows pulmonary fibrosis. Which drug can be administered in the given condition? Here are the options. A. Bortezomib B. Roflimilast C. Imatinib D. Perfenidin And the correct option is D. Perfenidin. Here is the explanation. Recently in one of the exams they asked when the COVID-19 happened, there was lung fibrosis. So is there any drug which prevent that lung fibrosis? Yes. Pulmonary fibrosis due to COVID-19. Is there any drug to prevent that? Prevention. So recently in one of the exam they asked this question. What is the name of this? It is called Pyrphenidone. Pyrphenidone is an anti-fibrotic agent. It's an anti fibrotic agent. Question 2. Which of the following drugs is most appropriate to be used for the treatment of diarrhea in a patient who was treated for colorectal carcinoma with 5 fluoroacyl? Here are the options. A. Ciprofloxacin B. Loperamide C. Atropine D. Ornidazole And the correct option is B. Loperamide. Here is the explanation. But in GAT, there is one more problem. Not only nausea and vomiting, patient will also develop diarrhea due to the drugs. Diarrhea due to the drugs. Now, how do you manage? Most of the diarrhea is not because of infection. It is because of the drug adverse effect. Patient will have diarrhea. It's a secret diarrhea. The drug of choice for cancer-induced diarrhea is by the name lopiramide. Lopiramide. Again, this is a important question for you. Question 3. A patient on anti-cancer therapy developed an infection. Blood analysis revealed neutropenia. Which of the following drugs is likely to be effective in this patient? Here are the options. A. Romiplostin B. Oprilvikin C. Filgrastin D. Epoitin Alpha And the correct option is C. Filgrastin. Here is the explanation. GCSF analog. G stands for only granulocyte, colon stimulative factor. The analog name is filgrastin. It is called as filgrastin. Now, if you add a peg for this, we get one more drug, and that is called peg filgrastin. The advantage of adding a peg is to make the drug longer acting. That's it. One more drug similar to that is lenograstin. So you read their name, graph or granulocyte, stim for stimulator. Now where do you use them? We use them in a case of febrile neutropenia. So when we use anti-cancer therapy, there is bone marrow suppression. Patient is susceptible to infection and there is a risk of febrile neutropenia. Or a patient is having a granulocytosis or patient is having leukopenia due to anti-cancer drugs. So there we can use this drug, filgrastin, lenograstin. Question 4. Which among the following is not preferred as an analgesic in rheumatoid arthritis? Here are the options. A. Tramadol, B. Ketorolac, C. Naproxen, D. Oxycodone. And the correct option is B. Ketorolac. Here is the explanation. Drug called Ketorolac. Now, Ketorolac can be given IV. So, intravenously, it is used for post operative pain conditions. So, post operatively, if the patient complains of pain, we use Ketorolac. Question 5 Which among the following is a short acting beta blocker? Here are the options. A. Nadolol, B. Propranolol, C. Esmolol, D. Atenolol. And the correct option is C. Esmolol. Here is the explanation. 
Yes, what is the shortest acting? Any guesses? Yes, you already know it is called S monologue. Question 6. A 66 year old man presented with difficulty in urination, back pain, and an elevated PSA blood test. An X ray revealed two radiolucent lesions in the bony pelvis, and MRI revealed several enlarged lymph nodes in the lower abdomen. Which of the following drugs can most likely be used to treat the given condition? Here are the options A. Anastrozole, B. Desogestrel, C. Gosrilin, D. Oxandrolone. And the correct option is C. Gosrilin. Here is the explanation. Happy is we use GNRH agonist. We have discussed these drugs already in the hypothalamus pituitary topic. Let me give an example of this GNRH agonist. For example, Luprolite. Luprolite. Then Guacerilin. So this can be used. But the question is, when you are giving GNRH agonist, are we give it intermittent or continuous? So obviously, you have to keep that in your mind. It is given continuous. Don't give it pulsatile. If you give it, cancer will flare up. Question 7. Which of the following medications is safe for pregnancy-induced hypertension? Here are the options. A. Lisinopril B. Propranolol C. alpha dopa D. Lozertin and the correct option is C. alpha methyldopa. Here is the explanation. This alpha methyl dopa, it is used to treat hypertension in pregnancy. Alpha methyl dopa is safe. We can use it in hypertension in pregnancy. The name simply we call it as methyl dopa. Question 8. During recovery from anesthesia, a patient experiencing hallucinations at dreams. Which inducing agent is most likely responsible? Here are the options. A. Ketamine B. Propofol C. Epintone D. Atomidate And the correct option is A. Ketamine Here is the They are protein synthesis inhibitors. Particularly the focus will be on tetracycline and chloramphenicol which are called as broad spectrum antibacterial drugs. Now, these are not only antibacterial drugs, they also act on other protozoa also. So, we can call them as broad spectrum antimicrobials. So, we will start here. They are protein synthesis inhibitors. So, protein synthesis inhibitors. Question 9. Which among the following drugs does not require any renal dose modification in those with chronic kidney disease? Here are the options. A. Linagliptin B. Saxagliptin C. Repaglinide D. Gliburide And the correct option is A. Linagliptin. Here is the explanation. The drug can go out in two ways. Either by bile, that is liver, or by kidney, renal so the drug may go by bile or renal. Suppose I will take an example of a drug by the name linagliptin. So linagliptin is a drug used in diabetes. Linagliptin is a drug used in diabetes. Now linagliptin will undergo bile elimination only. It undergoes bile elimination. So if the drug undergoes bile elimination, question is, is it safe in renal failure? Suppose the patient kidney is not working. Can we use the drug? Think, think and tell me. If the drug kidney is not working, can I use the drug? Yes, because the drug is not depending on the kidney to go out. It is depending on the bile. So, the drug is safe in renal failure. So, this is one of the commonly asked questions in exams. If the drugs are going in liver, bile, feces, can we use it in a patient who has renal failure? Yes, you can use it. Repeat last question in your exam. Question 10. Which of the following PDE5 inhibitors is the longest acting? Here are the options. A. Sildenafil B. Tadalafil C. Wardenafil D. Avanafil And the correct option is B. Tadalafil. Here is the explanation. Phosphodiesterase. PDE stands for Phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Sir, what is the drug name? The drug name is Havanafil. 
then sildenafil so remember they end with fill fill then war denafil tadalafil so why are written like this because you can remember as you know psvt these drugs are asvt drugs but uh, this is a shorter acting one and tadalafil is a longer acting one long acting one okay question 11 a 72 year old male presents with complaints of a weak urinary stream and frequent urination in small amounts and is on prajosin. He also mentions that he frequently feels lightheaded and has low blood pressure. Which of the following alpha blockers will you prefer to give him? Here are the options. A. Alfuzosin, B. Terazosin, C. Tamsulosin, D. Doxazosin. And the correct option is C. Tamsulosin. Here is the explanation. Alpha 1A receptor. So we have alpha 1A selective blocker. And the name of that is called Tamsulosin. So they end with osins. Tamsulosin. They end with osin. One more is Silodosin. Again, you can see it ends with osin. And these are approved for BPH only. These are approved for benign prostate hyperplasia. Question 12. Which monoclonal antibody is used in cancer treatment? Here are the options. A. Omalizumab, B. Denosumab, C. Rituximab, D. Methotrexate. And the correct option is C. Rituximab. Here is the explanation. Monoclonal antibody and that is called Rituximab. So Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody. It targets CD20. So it's a blocker of CD20. What they ask in the exam is the CD20 blocker. I think most of you know the drug and the name is called Rituximab. Rituximab is very, very famous drug, very favorite for examiner, very favorite. Now, where do you use it? It is used in non hard skin lymphoma. I'll give a mnemonic for that. No match for this drug. No match for this drug. Now, what is M for? M for multiple sclerosis. And it is also used in an autoimmune disorder, myasthenic nervous. Because you know that in autoimmunity, the B cells are going to act on the NM receptor that is in myasthenic nervous. Now, A for arthritis. Now, which arthritis do we use it? Yes, you are right, rheumatoid arthritis. TTP, it is used in thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. It is also used in CLL and also it is used in hemolytic anemia. Which hemolytic anemia? Which hemolytic anemia if it is due to autoimmune process? Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, we can use it. The mnemonic is no match. Non Hodgkin's lymphoma, I told you the regimen is ORCHA, multiple sclerosis. Myasthenic gravis, rheumatoid arthritis, TTP, CLL, and hemolytic anemia, which is due to autoimmune disease. Question 13. A 26 year old woman presents with a unilateral throbbing headache associated with nausea and vomiting. She has had similar episodes in the past where the headache usually lasts for one to two days. Bright light increases her discomfort and she prefers sitting in a dark room. Which of the following drugs can be used to decrease his headache episodes in the future? Here are the options. A. Propranolol B. Alprazolam C. Diazepam D. Fuoxetine And the correct option is A. Propranolol. Here is the explanation. Coming to the B, the letter B, they are called beta blockers. So in beta blockers, the most commonly used drug for prophylaxis is propranolol. So propranolol is one of the most commonly used drug in prophylaxis of migraine. Question 14. Which of the following demand use requires regular monitoring of visual acuity and fundus examination? Here are the options. A. Methotrexate B. Hydroxychloroquine C. Sulfasilazine D. Lefunomide 
and the correct option is B hydroxychloroquine here is the explanation there is a drug by the name hydroxychloroquine so not so much efficacious compared to other drugs what we have discussed hydroxychloroquine it also has anti inflammatory property but the major adverse effect when we start hydroxychloroquine remember the e so remember whenever you think of hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine remember e for i in the eye it can produce the bulls eye maculopathy so it can produce bulls eye maculopathy if you are using it for very long period and also it can produce in the eye corneal deposits corneal deposits question 15 a person presents with acute chest pain nitroglycerin was given sublingually and pain relieved within men what is the mechanism of this drug Here options A release of endothelin B release of no C calcium channel blockade D beta blockade and the correct option release of no here is the explanation the mechanism of action how the drug works how nitrates work mechanism of action very very important now when we give nitrate nitrates are metabolized and you will get nitric oxide now there is something called mitochondrial aldehyde dehydrogenase this enzyme plays a major role to convert nitrates into nitric oxide question 16 most potent opioid is here are the options a fentanyl b morphine c pentazosin d pethidine and the correct option is a fentanyl here is the explanation called as synthetic opioids synthetic opioids so the name itself is telling you that they are synthesized in the lab and most of the synthetic opioids their usage is in the cancer therapy as well as general anesthesia so the first drug in that is a drug by the name fentanyl now fentanyl is 80 times more potent than morphine it is 80 times potent than morphine it is 80 times potent than morphine question 17 which of the following drugs is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor here are the options a acetazolamide b hydrochlorothiazide c furosemide d mannitol and the correct option is a acetazolamide here is the explanation target uh, as i was telling you the d they are called carbonic anhydrase inhibitors they are called as carbonic anhydrase inhibitors so their role is to decrease aqueous humor production they also decrease aqueous humor Now, what are the drugs here? The name is called acetazolamide. The name is acetazolamide, which is given as the oral tablet in glaucoma. Question eighteen: Which is the most cardiotoxic anti-cancer drug? Here are the options: A. Anthracyclines, B. Cyclophosphamid, C. Imatinib, D. Tamoxifen. And the correct option is A. Anthracyclines. Here is the explanation. Now, what drugs will cause cardiotoxicity? There are two important cardiotoxic drugs. One is the MAP called trastuzumab, and we have one more, and they are called anthracyclines. Anthracyclines like don rubicin, doxa rubicin, they can cause. Question nineteen. A 22 year old female presents to the clinic. She is a known epileptic patient and she wants to get pregnant. Which of the following antipileptic drugs has the highest teratogenic potential and is not prescribed to pregnant women? Here are the options. A valproat, B carbamazepine, C phenytoin, D lamotrigine. And the correct option is A valproat. Here is the explanation. Now question is what is avoided? avoid in pregnancy 
which has the risk of teratogenicity is valproate having the highest risk of teratogenicity. Question 20. You, being an ardent researcher in the field of vaccine production, are in charge of preparing samples to make a vaccine against the new variant of SARS-CoV-2. After getting satisfactory results in preclinical studies, you seek approval to do clinical studies, which requires healthy volunteers. Which of the following phases does this refer to? Here are the options. A. Phase 1 B. Phase 2 C. Phase 3 D. Phase 4 And the correct option is A. Phase 1. Here is the explanation. Phase 1 clinical trial. It is called as Phase 1. And what is the other name for Phase 1? It is also called as Human Safety Pharmacology. So, phase 1 is also called by another name that is human safety pharmacology. Now, you know that we found out the source, we did the animal study, but we have a drug. But the only worry what we are having currently to give it to a human is what if it causes adverse effect. So, the major aim of the phase 1 trial is to check for safety. So, when I give the drug, the patient may have adverse effect or he may suddenly die because of arrhythmia. So, the first thing what I want to check is safety. Now, what is the population who take this trial? Whom do we involve in phase 1 trial? The people whom we involve in this, they are called as human healthy volunteers. Human healthy volunteers. Question 21. The compound prostaglandin has been indicated in multiple conditions is actually a derivative of which of the following? Here are the options. A. Steric acid B. Arachidonic acid C. Linoleic acid D. Linolenic acid And the correct option is B. Arachidonic acid. Here is the explanation. Where do we get prostaglandins from? And you know the basics. So we have uh, the membrane phospholipid. So we have membrane phospholipid. The metabolism of this is done by an enzyme called phospholipase A2. From phospholipid A2, what we get is arachidonic acid. So arachidonic acid, so this is acted upon by two enzymes, the cyclooxygenase, that is COX, and the lipoxygenase. Question 22. Pilocarpine produces here are the options. A. Active meiosis. B. Active mydriasis. C. Passive meiosis. D. Passive mydriasis. And the correct option is A. Active meiosis. Here is the explanation. Pilocarpin is used in two conditions. What are those? It is used as eye drop. Now eye drop, it is used as a meiotic. So the meiosis caused by this is called active meiosis. So it causes active meiosis and it is used in glaucoma. It is used in glaucoma. The drug is called pilocarpin. Question 23. Which of the following drugs is a direct inhibitor of clotting factor 10A? Here are the options. A. Apixaban, B. Argotrobin, C. Fondaparinux, D. Aspirin. And the correct option is A. Apixaban. Here is the explanation. Direct 10A inhibitors. They are called as direct 10A inhibitors. And the name is like this, Apixaban. So the name is ending like this, except for 10A, ban. It will stop that, ban the 10A factor. You take the example of one more, battery saban. Then if you take edoxaban, then River Oxaban. So, everywhere it is Exaban drugs. So, you can identify this. And please remember, this is also Novak. Question 24. Pharmacodynamics deals with? Here are the options. A. Mode of excretion of a drug. B. Mechanism of action of a drug. C. Transport of drug across the biological membranes. 
B. Latency of onset. And the correct option is B. Mechanism of action of a drug. Here is the explanation. So, pharma means drug and the dynamics means action. So, the meaning of pharmacodynamics is the action of drug or in simple meaning I can write it as we will understand mechanism of action of drugs. So, we will understand how the drug works or in simple meaning pharmacodynamics is also called as what the drug does to body, what the drug does to body is pharmacodynamics, we all know that. But what body does to the drug that is pharmacokinetics we dealt in the previous video. Question 25. Drug of choice for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia is? Here are the options. A. Digoxin, B. Propranolol, C. Adenosine, D. Diltiazin. And the correct option is C. Adenosine. Here is the explanation. Adenosin. Now, adenosin, we already know. It is nothing but it is present in adenosine triphosphate. So, what we give adenosin as a drug, when we give it IV, is it long acting or short acting? Obviously, it is very, very short acting. If you check the half life of the drug, the half life of the drug is less than 5 seconds. Now, you may ask you a question, why it is very short acting? When we give adenosine into the vein, the cells of the vein itself will take it up because everybody requires ATP. So, adenosine is taken up. So, the RBCs and the endothelium, when we give it IV, they will rapidly take it up. So, they will take up adenosine and that's why it's very, very short acting. The question here is, if it is very short acting, should I give it very slow or very fast? Point number one. Point number two, should I give it in the peripheral vein or should I give it a central vein close to the heart? Yes. So, if you are giving it in a vein, IV, it is better to give more in a central vein. And when you are giving it, you have to give rapidly. So, we call it as rapid bolus should be given. These are pharmacokinetic importance. You should push it rapidly and preferably given in a central vein. Now, where to use it? It is used in two important conditions, PSVT. Now, PSVT is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It's a paroxysmal means sudden and successive. It will come and go. So, it has short duration. So, we use a short acting drug that is adenosine. It can also be used in SVT. For both the condition, it is a drug of choice. In the next one, we are coming up with 25 PYQs from anesthesia. Do join us tomorrow for a quick mock session of the subject. Like and subscribe if you learned something new today. See you in the next one.